and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a goat milk soap and I have a new special ingredient and this was sent to me by uh, from Cheryl at Epic Star Stargazer <laughs> um, and it is mulberry silk. So I'm going to try this today. Um, she says to use a cotton ball size and a large batch of soap so that's about what I've used to do with Tussa Silk so anyway I'm excited to try this and see how it feels so well, thank you Cheryl for sending that to me um, let me see so it's a goat milk soap oh and I have had um, just odds and ends leftover of fragrant oils and essential oils and so I made my own special sauce fragrant today of a couple of combos it's gonna be sort of a sugary lemony scent so a lemon sugar sugar lemon I haven't decided but that's gonna be the fragrance and so with that I got this sample bag color from crafters choice which is wholesale supply plus of a uh, golden pineapple yellow and I thought it looked kind of I know it says pineapple but I thought it looked sort of lemony um, and really beautiful so that's gonna be my color swirl in this wonderful goat milk soap today so I'm gonna get everything pulled together get my hair pulled back and uh, Let's get this together. I can't wait to try this mulberry silk. I'm very curious about that. So um, yeah, let's make some soap. So I've got my goat milk in here with a little bit of distilled water just to get it up to the right level. I have my lye measured and I'm gonna add my silk now. So um, let's see, Cheryl writes in the note she sent me to don't cut it. She said to find the end and just pull what you need from the end. So it's this long fiber. Oh, it feels so soft. This feels wonderful. So I'm gonna just pull off, let's see, there, I'll pull off a little bit more. So that's about a cotton ball size worth. And um, I'm just gonna throw it in here and uh, let's give it a try. Oh boy, this feels wonderful. I have a feeling this is gonna be marvelous. So I'm gonna stuff this all back in here, get my gloves on and we'll start adding our lye and hopefully the heat will melt this Similarly, how it does to Tussa Silk. Um, if not, well, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what we do there. But um, I'm sure the heat mass will melt it up if it's a silk fiber. So I'll just, this is how I do my lye on goat milk. I just pour a little bit and stir it until that's dissolved. And then I'll add a little bit more. It's a very slow process, but it's a good way to add... Um, lie to goat milk and not get it curdled or singed or anything and it'll still turn a very bright yellow uh, which kind of goes with our soap color but um even if you go really slow i find it gets yellow now i have seen some people manage it but not me it turns yellow maybe i'm still i don't go slow enough but it's it all comes out just fine in the end <laughs> Um, I may add just a touch of titanium dioxide in here or split off and add a little um, so that the yellow color that I'm adding will punch out. I want it to, you know, stand out. So, and the fragrant blend that I'm doing, none of the fragrances have like discoloration issues. So hopefully that won't be a factor. All right, so that's melted. Oh, those fibers melted. They're already gone. I don't know if you can see but the silk fibers have melted in very smoothly. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more lye and just stir that till it dissolves. And I'm gonna keep doing this till all the lye is incorporated. All right, so we're almost all the way melted with the goat milk. I just wanted to show you that orange color that it gets. It's really pretty. It's very sort of golden buttery colored, but that is the color my goat milk turns when I add lye to it, even if I go slow. And uh, I've got my goat milk with my mulberry silk in here. And um, this is my oils, butters, the fragrance uh, blend is in here, and kale and clay. So that's what we've got going on. Um, and sodium lactate, sorry. Got some sodium lactate in here too. I'm gonna add these together and I decided as I'm pulling my oils out, I'm gonna use my frosting comb and do a bottom layer and then a swirl just to make this really fun and pretty. I thought sugary lemon sounded like a fun, sunshiny soap. So I wanted to do something in there. All right, let's get this poured in here. It was just kind of fun to play around with my fragrances and come up with some blends when I have just, you know, a little shy, not enough to do a full batch. And um, it was just fun to do that. So I got some cotton balls or Q-tips out and did some fragrance blending. And I think this smells really good. 
just going to give it a quick little blend here to reach emulsion and then we'll split off for our bottom layer. I'll turn this around. There we go. I like to put my hand over the spout in case it kicks up. And again, I'm not stick blending this entire time. I'm stirring and then just little pulses to reach emulsion here. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Alright, and we'll split off for our bottom layer. I am going to use that sample that I have, that pineapple mica um, from Wholesale Supply Plus in my bottom layer. Uh, and then I will use Yellow Vibrance from Nurture Soap for my top swirl. That's the plan. Because this isn't a whole lot of mica, so I thought it would be a good amount for the bottom. Yeah, if I can get it all in there. These little bags are so nice for sample size, but they're kind of messy to work with. <laughs> so let me pull my stick blender over and get this blended in really good. And I want a nice medium trace on here um, so that we can run our hanger through it. Or not our hanger, our little comb. let that sit for a bit and while that's sitting we can go ahead and split off uh, for our color swirls so we'll pour some in here for our yellow swirly on top there we go and again I'm going to use this yellow vibrance in here let me pull this over So I can usually pick up about maybe a teaspoon on, well, not really, but there. That's probably about two teaspoons worth. And we'll see if that does it. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I think that's gonna be good. And sometimes yellows can morph as they go through gel phase and then they'll come back. So this might turn a little golden looking but I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna get a little titanium dioxide over in here, just to brighten it up, because I want those yellows to pop. There we go. All right, now we'll come in here with the titanium dioxide. my little owl molds here. These are so cute. So when I scoop the comb through, I put the extra in there. So let's get this over. See if we're ready to do this. Oh boy. Yeah, that's not really holding. I'm going to wait just a little more because that's not really making a big difference. Let's give it a try here. better.
right, and we're back the next day, and I did put a blanket over this and let it go through gel phase last night. It's about 24 hours later. Um, and the yellow is a little bit faded out, but it's a beautiful lemony yellow. So let's uh, get this out of the mold here and see how those layers came out. mold our little owls the yellow um, faded out very lightly I don't think I had quite enough uh, in the bottom layer to really impact the color but I think it's gonna be really pretty but these little guys unmold so easily and look how cute that is I just think these are adorable so and they're so flexible um, and the sodium lactate in the soap does really help unmold especially like a little intricate mold like this um, but, all right, there's my little owls. Let's get to cutting here. So these are very pale lemon, which I think kind of goes with the lemon sugar. It's just very pale, um, but you can see the little scallops. Uh, so this, I didn't have enough mica. I think I should have probably doubled the amount, but I had that sample bag but it's really pretty and um, the fragrant combination, it's very sweet, sugary, lemon, lemon sugar. So I'm happy with the swirls and the tops. So let's get cutting. 